I think there are several reasons why I come to Mason for economic studies. Uh, first of all, because my interest in economics and business and NGO and stuff, you know, Washington DC is a per perfect place as a world center of politics and NGO. So being here at Mason, it gives you a lot of, you know, network firsthand experiences and resources to observe and learn in such an environment. And that's my first reason to come here, you know, to Washington DC. And secondly, to come into the U.S. as I had experiences, because um, uh, I think U.S. is a place where you have so many amazing people. I mean, as classmates and professors, and also it's also because the U.S. is a place where you work hard. I mean, the institutional environment is like if you work hard, you will be rewarded. I mean, correspondingly. So even if People are thinking about financing issues and stuff. If you work really hard, and you you can find you know like different ways. I mean, uh, assistantship and stuff. So that's another issue that financing wouldn't be such a big problem here in the U.S. I think that's pretty much like the reasons why I come. First of all, would be geographical location. I think uh, because I'm. I'm not a science student, so I'm more like a, uh, this major requires you to interact with a lot of people and then to, to you know, like ex experiment. And then I think geographic location is definitely one reason. And secondly, I think you will look at the faculty that if they're like their research um, kind of interests you. And thirdly, it's general, like a general environment in the university. Since I came back, I've been having this idea of uh, going back to graduate school, but I don't know at what point I'm going back. So I have been keeping an eye on, on researching the universities and programs that interested me. I would say that's, that has been a continuous, you know, just if I see something interesting, I just, you know, collect it in my, in my pocket. And then I think when uh, the time I started, officially started my application is probably in September. At that time, you know, starting taking those standardized tests and then asking for recommendations. I, I would say, yeah, that's um, make, maybe like five months, four months and five months is a, like a time range that I used to um, do all the application stuff. One of the biggest issues is to take, you know, like the standardized tests. They're really, I mean, tough. Especially, uh, I mean, especially for international students, you mean like, like the GRE test, it's more like, we, we teasingly call it God Note English. So it's very tough, so you better, you know, just do it earlier. So maybe one year before the deadline of the university, maybe like January or, or February or something. And then probably you have to take um, TOEFL or ELSE. I, just, I suggest that you take the um, tests like half a year before your application starts. And then secondly, you have to think really hard why you come to this program and why you choose this school. That's going to be really helpful uh, experiences for you to, you know, to write your essay. Because you're writing at your essay is like something the admissions will see as you know, they don't see you, but they see Asi, they'll, they'll think about what type of person this is. So I think that's, that's some advices. Uh, in the first semester, I came, right after I came here, I, th I think the second week or something, I've got a, um, you know, like this job of teaching international students and scholars their spoken English with the English Language Institute. That's a very, very interesting job. And then this semester, I've, uh, I was offered with a graduate research assistant. So that, you know, uh, I mean, working is an experience you can learn about yourself more and also, you know, financing for your tuition and stuff. They give me a lump sum of a salary, but can pay off, I mean, basically pay off my tuition. So that's, that's good. The process is kind, kind of a really complicated. You have to fill out a lot of forms and then to prepare for a lot of um, visa questions and stuff. I think um, it wasn't, I mean, it, it was never um, 
you know, an easy uh, job to prepare. But uh, as long as you w really went to the uh, the uh, visa interview, it's it's not as you know terrifying as a lot of people think it was. As long as you just behave yourself and let them know that you're gonna here to to come here to study and stuff. That that's yeah, that's not really tough. First of all, I have to hang out with a lot of friends, you know, just saying goodbye. And then I um, sort of did some research whether I'm coming here to um, Oklahoma or to Mason. I just kind of do some research about living, basically living here on campus and off campus, and also in the area. And uh, then I did some, you know, just going through my friends to get, try to get some connections. I mean, any, anyone who's here and it makes me feel more comfortable because, you know, friends are here. And then I would say I also, you know, because uh, I think a lot of people also kind of um, don't know if they, they will be uh, comfortable here in the first place because they're worrying about their English skills. Um, so probably it will be good to just, you know, keep speaking English because a lot of my friends are doing, doing that since they got visa and stuff, everything settled, start speaking English every, every time, you know. Um, yeah, I guess there was a lot of details you, you have to go through, but... Um the URPS is re really helpful. I remember I was, um, uh, you know, just writing emails with uh, an advisor, Aaron. I remember, like, if, uh, if I see my Gmail account right now, I had, like, 40-something emails going back and forth with her. I actually look up online and found the Chinese Student Scholar Society um, Association, and then I sent them the emails, and actually they arranged someone to pick me up from the airport. So that's, you know, that's really great. I actually arrived here right on time. I mean, uh, so actually on the following day, I, I remember, as I remember, there was uh, the orientation. So on the first day, I was kind of jet-lagged, of course, and then I had some friends, I mean, living uh, in the similar apartments and, you know, surrounding areas. And they showed me around, because I came here like a week before, they showed me around, like, where's Sub 1, where's uh, J Johnson Center, where's your classroom buildings and stuff. stuff. And then on, on the following day, the OIPS stuff and, you know, other welcoming uh, offices, they give us really detail-oriented the uh, orientations. And then, actually, the student volunteers just took you around the campus. Before I came here, a lot of uh, students and, you know, we, we sometimes uh, burn out free time uh, with American TV shows and movies. Like I remember a lot of uh, my classmates and friends, they, uh, we were watching Friends. So uh, that was a really great TV show, but uh, what we thought all the American life was is like, you know, the six people and the friends and the stuff. But uh, actually when I came here, it's, um, I mean, all the, the good things and, and, and about here uh, is that um, when, when you come here on campus, you will see oh, and suddenly see the overwhelm of, I mean, the language and stuff. I think the most uh, surprising thing for me is the uh, maybe academic overload, uh, academic workload. It's uh, not as, I mean, maybe in China it's um, not as hard. I mean, uh, if I'm taking like seven or eight classes, but here even if one class, it's like over semester you have like this many stuff to read and maybe like many papers to write. So I think that's one of the academic experiences that, you know, surprised me. I mean, the information you receive for a single course. And uh, I think also there's another one, it's like how welcoming people are. I mean, especially when, uh, when I, uh, the first time I came to the U.S., I, I, I didn't know, I was confident in my English because I was an English major, but uh, I didn't know, you know, how should I get involved with the community. But actually there were student volunteers and stuff, they all were, you know, organizing different, um, you know, events and stuff to invite international students coming. I think that was very, you know, Good.